Hi, good afternoon, everyone, beta. So today we would be talking about Saint Xavier's University, Kolkata, where you have your uh, masters in economics entrance exam coming up. So as we all know that earlier the date of application of Saint Xavier was sixteenth of May, and then it had got extended to eighteenth of May till one p.m. So I hope that all of you have gone ahead and applied at Saint Xavier's. Now let me go ahead and uh, tell you some of the good pointers that you have at uh, uh, Saint Xavier's Kolkata. First of all, the faculty is definitely an excellent faculty. You can definitely, you know, uh, without any doubt, go ahead and take admission here to study from a good faculty. You would be able to see that uh, we have good curriculum. Uh, as part of the syllabus, right? And, um, you know, most of the students, they can easily get jobs at the corporate sector, in the corporate sector. And they also go ahead and they focus on R and Python software, which is a good thing. And they have, they believe in overall development. So a lot of conferences, a lot of seminars, and a lot of lectures take, take place at St. Xavier's. Now, let me just go ahead and quickly take you through the kind of paper that will be asked in this uh, exam and what you have to go ahead and you have to prepare yourself for. So this is basically, uh, uh, you know, one of the sample paper that is shared on their website. So if you go ahead and you notice, the questions are not very difficult. So for example, the first question is related to Kurno model and uh, you know, we know what are the assumptions of the Kurno model. The second question is related to Edgeworth box and therefore, uh, you know, this is related to general equilibrium. The third question is also related to Edgeworth box contract curve. The fourth question is also related to Edgeworth box contract curve. The fifth question is also related to forms of market monopolistic competition. Again, sixth forms of market oligopoly. So you can see that the kind of questions that are asked in this exam are not very difficult. I would go ahead and I would suggest you that from the side of uh, microeconomics, go ahead and revise your basics well. So go ahead and know what is perfect competition, what is monopoly, what is monopolistic competition, what are their features. Within uh, this, you should be aware about Sweezy model, about the Chamberlain model, you need to make sure that you understand uh, what is Kurno, what is the Nash equilibrium and Bertrand model. Then uh, you need to also understand the uh, conditions of perfect competition. What is a shutdown point? How do you uh, talk about shutdown point in short run, in long run, right? And then you have to be well aware about Monopsony also. Anna? So what is Monopsony? Monopsony is when we are talking about the labor market right? So what is the condition in the labor market, right? If it is perfect competition, what happens? You want to equate value of marginal product to what? Huh? And if it is uh, imperfect competition, then what happens? So monopsony ka condition bhi, you have to be well aware about that. Uske baad beta, you need to do some very, very basic questions. So for example, if you just look at this one, Yahan pe aapko short run total cost function diya hua hai. You are given the market price and it asks you what is the profit of the firm. Maximum daily profit of the firm. So, bahut simple hai. You can just equate MR right to MC. Yahan pe because this is uh, uh, you know price is 20. So, MR bhi 20 hi rahega. AR bhi 20 hi rahega. It's a constant function. Yahan se marginal cost lo, find out the marginal cost, equate MC to MR, find out the quantity, put it back in the profit function and find the profit. Hai so these kind of simple numericals will be asked to you in exam. And I hope that you will be able to solve this numerical. Let me just show you if I can. Just take this numerical once. Hmm. Okay. So the questions are not very difficult. The only thing that you have to make sure is that you are well clear with your basics. Huh? If you are clear with the basics, you will be able to go ahead and solve it. Okay. 
So for example, this question is going ahead and it is saying that the total cost is given to you as 40 plus 10Q plus 0.1Q to the power 2. The market price is given to you as $20 and they are asking you to find out the profit. Okay. And not, all, not also profit. They are asking you to find the quantity only better. They are asking you to find out the quantity only, right? So if you have to go ahead and you have to solve this, it is very, very simple. What you will be doing? Just equate MR to MC. So what will be your marginal cost beta? Just differentiate this function with respect to quantity. What will you go ahead and what will you get? So del TC by del Q, this is going to be 10 plus 0 0.1 2Q. I don't even need del. There is only one function here. So this will give me 10 plus 0.2Q and I will equate MC to P. So 10 plus 0.2Q is equal to 20, 0.2Q is equal to 10 and Q will be 10 divided by 0.2 which is going to give me the answer as 50, right? This will give me the quantity as 50. So if I just find out what will be the total cost bit of NQ is 50, 40 plus 10 into 50 plus 0 0.1 into 50 squared. So this is going to give me 40 plus 500 plus 2500 into 0 0.1. This will give me 500 plus 250 plus 40. That is going to give me 790. Right, and what will be your uh, total revenue beta? Price into quantity. Quantity is fifty. That will give me thousand. And when you find the gap between the two, thousand minus seven ninety, that will give me two hundred and ten. So two ten will be the profit of the firm. So this kind of simple questions will be asked to you, and you have to go ahead and do these questions, right? Okay, now just look into the next one beta. So what is this next question saying? So this question is going ahead and it is saying that you need to go ahead and just give me a second. Okay, so this question is going ahead and then saying that you need to go ahead and you need to find out uh, you're given this production function and you need to find out the elasticity of substitution. Very simple. Why? Because we know that whenever we have Cobb Douglas production function, elasticity of substitution is 1. So I don't even have to calculate it. I know elasticity of substitution will be 1 because it is a Cobb Douglas production function. Take beta. So now just go ahead and look into this one. This is just asking you what happens in law of variable proportion in the third stage. So first stage is when MP is increasing, second is when it is decreasing but positive and third is when it is negative. So simple question. So as far as the paper is concerned, you will realize that paper is not very difficult. It's a simple syllabus of whatever you have done as part of your CUET already. You will realize most of the questions you would know because you have already given your CUET paper. So I would go ahead and I would suggest you to just do this sample paper thoroughly, right? And go back if you have, you know, if you have taken the course with me, go back to your intermediate video lectures and just revise those. They will be enough to go ahead and clear this exam. So intermediate micro, intermediate macro video lectures are enough for you to clear this Xavier's exam. So we know in min function A and B are equal to each other and this is a complementary good case. You just have to write perfect complements. So paper is easy but just make sure that you go ahead and you revise this well. Right? Am I clear with this beta? So the paper, I hope you will be able to go ahead and uh, do well in your St. Xavier's exam. I wish you all the very best for your exam. Thank you beta.